Hi folks, welcome back to another Test Tuesday where we'll put a few common or garden joinery products through their paces to see what they can withstand. And today it's the turn of the humble little grey plastic plasterboard or drywall plug. This is uh, the ones that I use are made by Fisher and they're really handy for just lightweight stuff that you might want to hang on plasterboard. So anything from pictures and mirrors through to even holding stuff in place while glue dries. So for example, if you're making floating shelves and you've got battening around the wall and you're gluing the battening into the wall, it's handy to put some of these in and this will comfortably hold them in place until the glue has gone off because you might find that these on their own aren't sufficient to hold the battening in place and maybe you don't want to go as overkill as going all the way to the expanding metal fittings. So let's see what they can withstand. They are only light duty but let's see what happens when we just put as much force as possible through these until they literally just break. So the way I like to fit these I just use a six mil, six mil drill bit I always use a masonry bit into plasterboard and then just tap it in. And that's ready to rock. Let's go with a 10 gauge screw. I'm going to pop a washer on the screw as well. Just show you how these fittings work. If I turn this the other way around. Excuse the state of the drywall, it's just some spare stuff I had knocking about. But you can see the way these work. Basically when the screw comes up through the fitting, it forces the legs apart and then those little kind of sideways cleats that are on. I need something that I can point with. I'll point with that. So can you see the little cleat there and the little cleat there? That then will catch on the plasterboard as the fitting tries to pull itself out. And there's a certain amount of just friction fitting around the base of the fitting as well. So let's give it a try. Right, here it goes. So these fittings really aren't designed for anything heavy duty at all, but they're fine for things like pictures, mirrors, stuff like that, as long as they're not too heavy. You've got to bear in mind we're going on an axial force here a shear force it's going to handle a much higher load going down through the plasterboard as opposed to being pulled straight out of the of the plasterboard but let's go so i've just finger tightened it at the minute we're already up to five kilos let's see can we get to 10 i'm on 10 and it's just literally finger tightened at the minute is it going to fail without even using the spanner oh, it doesn't sound like it's failing just want to get to a, a load where it's fairly static. Let's have a look on the other side. Nothing seems to have gone yet. 11 kilos on one fixing is not bad for just a lightweight fixing like this. Let's see if it settles down a bit. say what's actually giving way at the minute you can't nothing looks like it's giving way but I mean we're fairly steady around eight nine kilos there which isn't bad let's, let's, let's keep going let's just see what happens see what we can get it up to I think that's good I think that's gone Yeah, that's gone. We had a peak of about 11 or 12 kilos, which isn't bad for a tiny little plasterboard fitting like this. Let's have a look at it and see how it's actually failed. So I don't know if you can see, it's tricky. This is all in the road. You can't really see down this gap, but it's the whole thing's sitting a good distance away from the actual 
thing, let me just take this out and show you what I mean. So the whole thing's pulled out a, a good distance. I mean, that actually still feels pretty solid. If, if it was a force going that away, that's what I mean by a shear force. A shear force, if you imagine this was on a wall, a shear force is going in that direction, whereas an axial force is going straight down, or on a wall it would be pulling straight out. Flip it over. That's really interesting. What's actually happened here is that the, the screw thread seems to have given way because the screw is hanging halfway out of the out of the fitting. The plasterboard hasn't failed yet. It's the fitting itself that's uh, that's failed. So I mean, as I say, that still feels pretty solid. Not bad at all. Again, I don't know if I can show you shear force with uh, with what I've got here. Okay, here's my very haphazard shear force measuring jig that I've made. So basically, we've got the same failed fitting. Imagine it's in a wall. We know it's already pulled itself halfway out, but now we're measuring force. Instead of coming out of the wall in that direction, we're now measuring force going up the wall. All I've done is I've hooked the chain around the fitting. I've left these on because I can't really take the screw out because it, if I take that out I'm never going to get it back in. The whole purpose of this is to see how much force this can still withstand even though we know it's failed. So let's go for it. Right we'll just take up the slack by hand. Let's see what we'll get to. I'm not expecting great things as I say this jig isn't designed for measuring shear force, but we'll see what we get to anyway. So we're past 20 kilos of force there. Now bear in mind that this is a completely failed broken fitting. So you've got to imagine, imagine you've got a picture or something hanging on that and we've still got a fairly steady 19 kilos of force there. That's not bad going. I'm going to do another test in a minute with a brand new fitting and see what we can get it up to with a shear force, just out of matter of interest. But 18-ish kilos, let's see how high we can get it before it completely fails on, on a shear force test. I think that's about it. We're not going to get it past 30. But, considering it's already a broken fitting, right, let's rig this up with a new fitting and see what we can get it up to. Right, so here we go. Shear force test on a brand new fitting. Just hand tighten it first. Let's see what we can get this up to. As I say, this is even less scientific than the other test. So we're straight away past 20. Just leave it for a minute to settle down. And these fittings aren't designed for anywhere near this sort of weight. I'll try and dig out the specs and I'll put it below what the official rating of these is. But that's pretty steady, around 19 kilos of shear force there. I reckon we can push that a fair bit higher. Let's just go until it breaks. We definitely went past the 40 there. Just trying to pull out at a bit of an angle. 
So there you go, we're sitting just past the 32 kilo mark there, which isn't bad for one lightweight plasterboard fitting. It's just to show you the difference between shear force and axial force and why when stuff is hung on a wall, you can get away with much higher loads than a force that's trying to be pulled directly out from the wall. So as I say, pictures, flat objects, that sort of thing, nearly all the force will be sheer. Things like TV brackets and shelves uh, and stuff that's more inclined to pull out of the wall, there'll be a much higher axial load. My general rule of thumb is to always treat it as an axial load and then anything else is a bonus. Can we get it to fail completely? Let's see what we can get us up to. It's gone. Completely pulling itself out of the wall at an angle now, you can see. There you go, not bad results for a little, tiny little plastic drywall plug. Really impressed to be honest. It's um, better than what I thought it would be. Um, I would never tend to hang anything uh, with a, an axial force coming out the wall on these. They're just not really designed to, to handle those sort of forces. For shear forces, we know that can handle a much higher load. As per usual, don't go off my figures for anything proper that you're doing. Go off the manufacturer's official specs. This is just a bit of fun to see what they can actually withstand. I hope you found that interesting. Post in the comments what your favorite lightweight plasterboard fitting is. As I say, this is my kind of go-to for lightweight stuff in drywall. Dead easy to use, relatively inexpensive, and I've used these for years and years and years and years without having any problems with them at all. If there's a particular product you would like to see me test on Test Tuesday, also pop that in the comments. I can't make any promises that I will actually get round to doing it because I've got a whole list of things that I do want to test. I shall see you next time. Bye.